So globally recognized a nuclear scientist, Sinami Lemasango, is being laid to rest in Nongo, Makwazulu Natal today. Uh, known as the Queen of Science, Masango died last week at the age of 37 after a short illness. She served on the board of the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa and was the first African woman to participate in experiments at the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Let's reflect on her contributions, and for that was joined now by Professor Fanelwa Ngekke Ajayi, who's the Deputy Dean of Research and Innovation at the Faculty of Natural Sciences at the University of the Western Cape. Prof, a good afternoon to you. Morning, it's still morning, yes, good morning to you. Thank you so much for speaking to us you know sad news indeed and I think about the the, the age of 37 so much uh, still expected uh, from someone at that age but you know share with me I suppose uh, your first thoughts on the hearing of her passing uh, good morning a lady and good morning to the viewers at home and thank you very much for the opportunity mm -hmm. I mean when the news came uh, personally to me as well as to the community at UWC, it was really one of shock and sadness because Sinemila was a very well-known person, as we know, in the field of nuclear science and nuclear physics. But most importantly, she was an alumni for us who stood to preach the importance of science and also the importance of not letting your background define who you are so you can do whatever it is that you want to do despite where you're coming from. So it is a real loss. And I would say that it really cut deep within all of us to learn of her early demise. Yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, just how far her star was able to reach, though, and it's absolutely incredible in the world of science. You know, if, you, if you've read up on some science, mm -hmm. you know that CERN, um, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, you know, right up there in terms of um, yeah. knowledge economy uh, for the world of, of nuclear, and that's where she was able to get. I mean, that is a, suffi yeah, a significant um, shattering of the glass there. I'm telling you, listen, lady, to get to a stage where you are able to enter those premises, you should know that you really hit, um, you know, one of the highest notes in terms of, of sciences. So kudos to her for the hard work because she really stretched herself to be able to get to a place where she understands nuclear physics to that point of being recognized and being invited to work there. Also, the supervisors that she had were actually believed in her as a person. They also believed in her scientific abilities to be able to trust her enough to take her to that environment. Mm -hmm. So you can just imagine she's the first African, the first black African to be able to work in those premises. So this was a really big deal for UWC. It was a really big deal for the physics department at the time yeah. when she was doing her MSc. So you can understand the depth of the studies that she had done in order for her to be welcome in that environment and the depth also of the supervisors together with her and what they've developed in order for them to be there. So it really, you know, it's so shocking that somebody, um, you know, we would lose somebody who is a, a shining star if not the shyness star in South Africa at the moment and the world because she had a footprint globally as well. So it's really painful, Naledi, to see something like this happen. Yeah. But my confidence is in the sense that she, her name will be written in the history of South Africa. And my hope is that our kids one day will be able to learn about her in primary school and high school up to the phenomenal work that she's done. I immediately think of the film um, Hidden Figures, you know, that tells the story about um, historically uh, the work of black women um, in the field of science and, you know, how hidden some of their contributions really, really are. And also, um, you know, yeah. the climbing of that corporate ladder for a black woman globally. I mean, this is not just nationally. Yeah. This is globally, constantly needing to prove yourself a lot more than everyone else. Um, incredibly important. Perhaps talk to me about interactions that you've had uh, with her that speak to that headstrong nature that, you know, even the deputy president uh, described her as headstrong yeah. and ambitious. Exactly. I mean, for me, it was more of community work. I think that's what we shared, the both of us. And what I had liked about her, the first interaction that I liked with her, was the fact that she had gone back home 
to start the foundation, the Seminale Masango Foundation back home, which is something similar that I also had started. So we had conversations around that and obviously to exchange ideas as to what appeals to somebody who is in a rural environment as opposed to somebody from a township where I grew up in. Yeah. So we had that similarities. But what I can say is that she was a very strong personality way stronger than I am. I'm quite timid, I would say. But she was very strong, and not to say in a bully type of, uh, you know, way, but I would say in the fact that if she has an idea, she is going to go full force with that idea, and she's going to work towards ensuring that idea is fulfilled. And I listened to Uma Mastango earlier this week when she spoke about her daughter sitting on the mattress back home. And she said that Sinamile had never, ever allowed anything to stop her. She had never allowed anybody to, to talk her down. She had never allowed anybody to hinder her pathway towards what she wanted to do. And that's the sense that I got as well through the sharing of ideas. So what I really loved about her is her willingness to go back home and as a person who was in the know-how, to go back home and tell the younger kids that, listen, you may be from Kwanongoma, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a future in the sciences. It doesn't mean that you cannot become educated. And that's the same message that I have as well. Yeah you know, being somebody who grew up in the township. So that is the kind of relationship I would say that we had engaged on yeah. primarily. I look at her story and I think one of the things that stands out is that she she sounds like so many of us, just incredibly extraordinary, right? Um, enrolling to the University of, of, of Zululand. This is at 16 to study physics, but then... Imagine. Yeah, and then having to... Then falling pregnant and needing to, to drop some modules and then having to drop out, then having to pick yeah. herself up again. I mean, it's, it's a story that I think speaks to... Um, you know, the, 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 certainly the, the, the resilience that is necessary. We're actually showing live visuals there um, of her funeral prof. And I immediately think about what this says to young women scientists. We talk a lot about encouraging STEM um, in, in South African young girls, uh, the importance of doing so, but also the resilience that's necessary. The resilience is necessary. And I would also you know, like to stress the fact that that resilience only comes when there is a firm confidence in the person. You know, you can imagine she felt pregnant. She was able to pick herself up again and achieve all of these uh, exceptional milestones. Now, my quest has always been that most of the time, our confidence in the world also comes from the background and also the people that are supportive of us as we step into the world. Mm. So I would say that she was resilient because she knew that she had a strong backbone. She had a, a huge support in Umama Mastango, her mom, to be able to you know, take care of the baby, be at home, and also encourage her to go back and continue with the studies. So this is just a call on parents that if a child does really you know, make a mistake. It was, remember, you know, people fall pregnant, kids fall pregnant, and there are different reasons why they fall pregnant. You know, some are naive, some, you know, fall into certain situations when they reach tertiary education. Mm. The point is that when they are back home and they express themselves of what this is, you know, this is what has happened, it is, therefore, the parent's responsibility or the guardian's responsibility to try and understand and meet the young person halfway. You can imagine the pain in her mom. Mm. You can imagine the pain of now having to bury your own child. And you, an lady in our African uh, um, culture, this is taboo to yeah. bury your own child. You know, and now Umzukulu is back home watching all of this, not being able to fully celebrate you know, the mom's achievements. It's really, really, really painful. But this is also a call on parents that, you know what, let's learn from Mom Mastango and what she was able to do with her daughter and understanding that she felt pregnant, had a child, and therefore also she was able to push her to be able to go back to school and look at what she's been achieved, what she achieved, because she knew she had the backing of the family, mm. a sister, you know, the whole extended family, the whole village, you know. So it's really, it's really painful, Nale. It's really painful. Yeah, incredibly sad. Um, the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation 
um, wrote is the country's first black nuclear scientist. And mm -hmm. we talk about first black woman, but she's mm -hmm. the first black nuclear scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, Masango's remarkable achievements paved the way for future generations of scientists and inspired countless young minds. Her tireless efforts to promote science education and empowerment, particularly among, we, among women in disadvantaged communities, will be deeply missed. I even think about the time that she had uh, you know, served at... Um, as the board and management of Umgeni Utugela Water. So the impact that she's had, not just in the fraternity of science, but also in being able to bring basic services uh, to yes. our people. Exactly. Naledi, and this is one important thing about being a scientist. You know, it goes to the core fact that we as scientists need to be able to identify problems within our immediate communities and solve them. Now, you can imagine... She is somebody from a rural area mm. who's serving on this board. So she, she has an extra knowledge of what, you know, water quality is like in the rural areas. And she's bringing her scientific knowledge to be able to, you know, forge solutions and find out how can all those issues be remedied. And this is a call again to all our scientists in South Africa that let us go back. Let us not forget where we come from. I know, you know, we get carried away. It gets busy. Careers take over. Things happen in the workforce, you know, but this is the kind of example that is needed to go back. What were the problems when I left home? If you come from that kind of setting, mm. And even if you do come from a more urban environment, I believe there are issues there as well. But what are those issues? And you as a scientist, how can you find means and ways to be able to use your voice and knowledge to influence change, you know, in those environments? So this was very, um, I think I commend her for this. And, you know, she's, she's a very, she was a very busy person. And to be able to stretch herself also towards being able to do this is also commendable. As yeah, well, absolutely. And before I let you go, and we'll, of course, be dipping into the funeral as well um, this morning. Yes. But, Prof, before I let you go, uh, the legacy that you think we... The, the, I, say, I, I even think about the to-do list that we take, right, from her life. I mean, you continuing to shape minds of young scientists, incredibly important work. Um, there is, the, of course, the, the issue of us needing to resource, um, mm -hmm. you know, the research that is done by our very own, considering... Um, you know, someone like Sinamile really showing not just South Africa, but certainly the world, what a massive contribution we can make to global knowledge. You know, there's a lot that should be, that, that, that could be done. Mm. I think the, the, the first thing, um, I think we need to put her story in the forefront of education. I think when those DBE books that our kids use in school are uh, revamped and rewritten, I think that's the first thing that we need to do. Secondly, I think we need to, as educators, to focus on the fact that when we look at people in the classroom, particularly at university, because university has a diverse population of people from all walks of life, it is important as the person standing in front to understand that you are dealing with a vast majority of people from vast different backgrounds. And therefore, the message that you relay should be able to touch on all those lives. You know, there's always the focus on, yes, women. Um, but there's also a call now. You find that men are also saying that, oh, what about us? What about us? Mm. You know, but that's a, a talk for another day. But I think what's important is that we need to be sensitive as educators as to the background of those people. Some of those kids, they have to sell cattle in order for them to get a bus ticket to university. So those are the things that we need to be sensitive about. But the other thing is that we need to, as educators, to instill a sense of belief that, listen, you may be here in a South African university, mm. but you can have a global print. You can have a global print by working hard and giving yourself to your craft, working hard and striving to dream big. I mean, Sinamela wanted to go to space. Mm. And Mark Shuttleworth, you know, uh, when they before her, she wanted to become the first African. So those are the kinds of dreams that we need to build within our young people. And it's very important that we really focus on that as educators to instill the, the sense of belief in that yeah. you may be an African child, but it doesn't stop you. Yeah. You can be global. 
And, and here's the fact, Tsunami Le has shattered that glass so for the many um, yes, that uh, will follow. And so the path uh, has been laid. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Prof, mm -hmm. and to, for helping mm -hmm. us really to uh, pay tribute to, to Sinami Le Masango, the queen of uh, science, uh, Professor Fanelwa Ngekwe Ajayi, speaking to us uh, this morning.